Well, it's great loss to Dallas County. Uh, Denver was a, a strong man, a strong commissioner. He was rather a quiet person, but he was very effective on the commissioner's court. And uh, he helped bring about uh, a good county government. He worked at it rather hard. He uh, didn't move out. His fast may be strong, but he was steady and he was solid. Texas has always been bound by a majority vote out of a precinct convention. Uh, these people uh, go to the county convention, they're into the state convention, and they're into the national convention. Under the California at this time, will go bound to one delegate out of a state primary. There isn't any reason why we should dissolve or uh, remove. We're the fifth largest state in the country. We're going into convention with the fifth largest delegation, 96 votes. If we go in with, uh, with our delegates divided among three, four, six candidates, that knocks us from the fifth spot down to the 25th or 35th spot. It lo we lose our effectiveness. The Attorney General has declared unconstitutional the ethics bill that came out of the legislature, which uh, calls for disclosure on the part of candidates and their funding. Do you feel that the uh, intent of that bill is still clear, even though it was vetoed, and will there be full disclosure? I, I'm sure that the intent was clear. Uh, I'm sure it is still clear uh, to the people around this state that they would like to have their public officials uh, disclose, uh, for the most part, what their what their business interests are, and what their financial condition is. And I think that most of the candidates uh, running for any public office uh, will make this offer of disclosure. Well, I think that it means that uh, probably the city and the county will be able to consolidate uh, health functions probably sooner than we would have. Isn't it possible, Judge, that this all should have been done a long time ago? Only a few years ago would we have been able to do so because a constitutional amendment was passed uh, by the legislature that would enable us to consolidate the functions of the city and the county. And so it's been only a short time, and of course it uh, requires a few months and sometimes a few years to implement programs that are needed. And I want to say this, that Dr. Hutchinson has been a good uh, county servant for the past uh, several years. He came in in 1962 and has served the county well, and uh, we regret his passing from the scene. But uh, I believe that over a long period of time that it will be helpful if we can uh, maintain the efficiency that we have now uh, at a uh, reduced cost to the taxpayers. Of course, that's good. Well, as you can see, this is the front cover showing head coach Bobby Crum and J.P. LeBlanc, the team captain. We thought it fitting that we show this because they've been together for six years with the St. Louis Braves before the team moved to Dallas to become the Dallas Blackhawks. So it was only fitting, as I say, that we had this cover. And then on the inside, a most beautiful centerfold, which shows the team picture on the one side, but on the other side, on the left-hand side, is all the lines, the primary lines that we use in full color, which we think is going to be a tremendous uh, conversation piece. Where can fans uh, get it, and how much does it cost? Well, fans can obtain it at the Coliseum. In fact, it'll go on sale for the first time Saturday night during the Fort Worth game. It'll be on sale at all times there. And uh, there's a possibility that the two men who are responsible for the publication of this book, Jim Vasey and Dan Fabian, will find other outlets, but it'll cost $2 plus tax, and we think it's going to be quite a hot item at State Fair Coliseum. Are there still tickets available for the game? There are. There should be at least uh, 22 to 2,500 good seats available. We will have a tremendous crowd from the advance sale. It looks like we could very well top the 7,000 mark, and uh, even the crowd that we got our trophy on opening night.
through the first 12 days of this year, we have recorded 17 armed robberies in which five people have been killed. Some of these have been innocent bystanders, some have been victims of these robberies. This is a serious matter and we're taking some very stern steps in dealing with this matter. We are now beginning to deploy our shotgun squads in potential robbery locations. Our crime analysis unit has been doing an outstanding job in describing for us potential robbery locations. And using this information now, we are deploying in pairs shotgun squads in these potential robbery locations in an effort to apprehend those uh, armed robbery suspects who are causing so much concern for all of us in this city. Dallas Mayor Wes Wise flew from Dallas to Washington in time for the ceremony this morning announcing the grants of money in what's called the High Impact Anti-Crime Program. I was with him on that flight. We talked about some of the reasons Dallas will get the money. He spoke highly of Police Chief Frank Dyson. He said Dyson has made many innovative moves since he became the chief, and he said Dyson has put Dallas ahead of other cities such as Baltimore, Boston, and Cleveland. Because Dallas is more fortunate, it has not so much crime on the streets. We're starting with somewhat of a leg up. In the old executive office building in Washington today, Attorney General John Mitchell spoke of the program and then introduced the Vice President, Sparrow Agnew, who spoke of the goals of the High Impact Anti-Crime Program. The goal is to make a quick high impact against burglaries on a variety of street crimes, robbery, mugging, assaults, rapes, and we hope to reduce street crimes and burglaries by 5% in two years and by as much as 20% in five years in each of these cities. There will be a public education program to inform citizens as to how they can better protect themselves and their property. This education effort will also involve research and the application of present techniques for the most effective systems of locks and alarms. Next, there will be enhanced anti-crime patrols by police, and this could include more policemen plus better equipment, tactics, and training. Police not only would stress prevention, but increased apprehension of offenders as well. New equipment might include helicopters and improved radio systems to get police to the scene of the crime faster. High impact will also involve special programs to prosecute street crime and burglary offenders. And this means both more effective and larger staffs of prosecutors and special court dockets for these offenses. My way of thinking, one of the great things about this grant is it gives us the opportunity in the local city to put our put, put some real uh, money where our determination is. We've said we wanted to fight crime. This gives us the opportunity to do it. Better than that, it is a deterrent to crime in that it tells the petty criminal, uh, the dope pusher, the uh, robber, the uh, assaulter, uh, you better stay out of our environs because we're going to uh, throw you behind steel bars if you don't shape up, and we have the means by which to do it now. Furthermore, it tells the crime syndicate or the bosses from outside the city of Dallas, we don't want you and we won't have you, and we have the finances to fight you off. So I think this is as much a crime deterrent as it is a crime preventer. The exact amount of each city's grant isn't clear yet, but it could range up to $20 million over a three-year period. The money will be used to fight the toughest of all problems, crime in the streets, such things as rapes and muggings and molestings. We're aiming for a 50% reduction in crime by 1976, an ambitious project, but one which almost anyone would be willing to see accomplished. Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News on the Move, in Washington.
might bring out some of the more technical emphasis and one that will succeed. Thought of a question. Because I, I think that that our present constitution is really at the basis of the uh, of the problems that have just festered and come to light in the past two years. We keep talking about reforming this aspect of government and that, and invariably the problems go back to to this uh, multi-volume document that was was adopted in 1876 when we were trying to restrict state government as much as possible. I feel that it's a very good program. I honestly do. From all the people I've talked to who have had the training this past fall and who are now beginning in the uh, training during these night sessions, uh, they say it's very good. Then why do some of your teachers apparently object to it? A lot of the teachers feel that they've, uh, they've had so much uh, discussion on human relations that they, they feel that it's some sort of a, a slap at their professionalism, that they, in fact, know how to deal with the situation, uh, even interracial situation. And, of course, this program is one designed uh, to touch not only racial issues, are, are not issues, perhaps, but uh, interpersonal relationships. And I think that's the thing that the people do not understand. Most of the teachers do not understand. And uh, again, the people who have had the training have uh, praised it. They, they found it uh, great. And they found that it would uh, help them in any situation other than, you know, as, as well as a classroom. Possibly at one time the pilot said he was beginning to talk about being a loser. Uh, when someone begins to talk about being a loser and are desperate enough and is desperate enough rather to uh, resort to the tactics that he had resorted to, then you begin to worry. Well, he may do something in desperation. But after 5:40, I think that uh, he probably began to realize that uh, this wasn't going to work the way that he felt it would because up until 5.40, uh, he had control of the situation. He was giving orders to everybody, and uh, everybody was obeying the orders that he gave, such as the, he wanted the cars away from the plane. He wanted the openings in the plane closed. Uh, the only thing that uh, he wanted done that we did not do was disconnect the gas truck.
with him. But as time went by, we began to think we had somebody who may have mental problems. Between his deadline of 5.40 and the time you actually captured him, do you feel that Last year, seven games into the season, Tom Landry decided to call every play. He used an alternating tight end system to send in plays from the bench, then using Pettis Norman and Mike Ditka. In 1971, Bill Truax acquired from the Rams, along with the venerable Mike Ditka. They have been an instant success for the Cowboys, catching more passes this year than two tight ends have in the club's history. I talked with both of them here in New Orleans. Bill, this must be a dual thrill for you, first of all, to have the Super Bowl in New Orleans in your home territory, but also to be playing in your first one. Oh, Vern, I tell you, I can't believe that Truax is going to the Super Bowl. And especially, I can't believe that Truax is going to the Super Bowl in New Orleans. I think uh, last time we were here, we played the Saints. We had a real bad day. Let's hope that we don't have a repeat. Have you been hassled much by uh, relatives in terms of uh, demands for tickets and so on? Oh, yeah, yeah, but, uh, you know, I... I didn't come down here to be in the ticket business, and I hope I hadn't been rude to anybody, and I hope people understand. I've, uh, you know, when I've talked to people, I said that we got 20 tickets uh, for the game, but I forgot to tell them we, we had an option to buy 20 tickets, you know, and they're 15 bucks a shot, so uh, that can be a big difference, but uh, I've been swamped. Uh, the telephone rang off the wall all week, but, uh, you know, you're limited. There's nothing you can do about it, so I just hope people understand. What do you do, Billy, in, in uh, trying to get away from this sort of uh, diversion and concentrate on the ball game? It must be a little tough for you. Well, I think uh, part of that credit goes to the NFL and the PR and uh, publicity people for, for staging this thing uh, two weeks after the regular season starts. They give you a week to get out here and get ready for it. So uh, we hit town last night, and I think the guys, uh, you know, hit the streets and uh, checked things out in the quarter and looked around a little bit. and. Uh, I think things will kind of taper off towards the end of the week, and uh, we'll start. We'll get a curfew about the middle of the week, and start uh, hopefully building up to a rising crescendo for Sunday afternoon. Well, you know, in that respect, the location of the hotel is pretty advantageous because you're a long way away from it. That's an old George Allen trick, I'm <laughs> saying. <laughs> Bill, what uh, what talking football now? What are your thoughts about this Miami team? I think they're the finest football team that we've played. Uh, <clears throat> Frank Lieber asked me earlier what team that I could compare him with, and it would have to be a Baltimore team because of the uh, the coaching. Uh, Don Shula, I think, uh, gets all the credit for this success that this Miami team has enjoyed. Uh, these guys were just plain old ordinary guys. Uh, hell, they were losers for, for several years, you know, and uh, he came down there and turned the whole thing around, uh, similar to what George Allen did when he went to Washington. And I think uh, all the credit goes to Shula. Uh, with all due respect to all the players and the great athletes that they have, but uh, they were there before Shula got there, but they weren't winning. You know, in, in your sense, of course, this is his first Super Bowl for you, and I'm sure that there'll be a, a gut reaction to it, a little bit of t tightening in the stomach muscles. But uh, for the rest of the team, this is the second time around, and it's, it's an experienced ball club. Will that be a factor? I really don't know, Vern, because like you said, <laughs> this, this is my first chance here, and uh, I just know that everybody on this club has got a championship ring, and I came here to get myself one, and I just want the biggest one of all of them. Mike, this is the second shot for you fellas. Uh, I was talking with Bill Truax and asked him if he thought that the experience factor might be uh, important in this ballgame. What are your thoughts on it? Uh, Vern, I, I really can't say that that's, that's really important, really. I think the whole thing is going to boil down to Sunday. I think we're ready to play. Uh, I think, you know, the maturity, uh, last year we went into the game, and I think there was a lot of uh, hesitation in our minds that we really weren't sure what we were doing. I don't know if what we're going to do Sunday is going to be the right thing, you know, offensively or defensively, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyways. And that's the big difference from last year. I think that we, we were worried too much about what we're going to do. This year we're going to do it. It's going to be, you know, we're going to make it right. And I think that's the, the biggest thing going for us right now is the maturity that this ball club has. I, don't, I wouldn't say it's because we were here last year or anything. I just think it's the maturity, the thinking, the, the attitude that we have right now, that we're going to go in that game to play the best we can, and that should bring us victory. Talk a little bit, if you will, about uh, the alternating tight end system. It's an unusual device to use tight ends as, uh, as, all, as messengers, more or less. Is it a, is a source of concern for you at all? Not at all. I tell you, uh, 
Vern, you know, it wasn't a concern, uh, a concern last year when I alternated with Pettis. It was, to me, it was just, you know, I, I just enjoyed being playing and contributing. This year with Billy, uh, probably nobody gets along as good on the ball club as Billy and I, and we have great respect for each other. And uh, right now, I know Billy would be playing a heck of a lot more if his leg wasn't bothering him, you know. And, you know, it, it's up to me to take up a little slack for him. He's going to have some surgery after the season. And, uh, you know, next year I told him, I said, we're going to work out hard, get in shape, and, uh, you know, we'll come back. And, you know, if we alternate, good. If we don't, if you play, that's wonderful. I'll back you up, if vice versa. But uh, it, it's no concern. I think that, you know, that Billy and I both feel that, you know, we're contributing something to our ball club, and that's the most important thing. I think that's what everybody feels. That's why we're winning so much right now, you know, that everybody is not expecting anybody else to do their job. They're just going ahead and do their own job and contributing whatever they can to our club. You know, last year when you uh, uh, you and Pettis were alternating, we heard that uh, more passes would be thrown to the tight end. They weren't. This year, they have been. Is it uh, a concentration on the part, uh, uh, you know, just a desire to get to that tight end or his own defense or what? I'll be honest with you. I'd like to say it's, you know, it's because of Billy and I, but I don't think it is. There's so much zone defense in the league right now that you're going to have to throw the ball to the tight end and back. You know, Walt caught 39 balls. I think he was right. about our leading receiver. Well, maybe he caught more than that probably, but... Uh, uh, you got to throw to the tight ends and back because of the zones, and plus the fact that we have Lance and Bobby outside. There's no way that they're going to play us with a standard man-to-man -man defense or where they're going to concentrate on a tight end. Now, we'll get some double coverage inside once in a while, but it's down by the goal line or something. You know, they have to really concentrate on Bobby and Lance, and that's why we're getting the ball so much. Unspoken is the thought that this alternating system has added years to the careers of both of these men now into their 30s. If that be the case, they will be satisfied for a long time to come. From New Orleans, this is Vern Lundquist, Channel 8 Sports. Tonight's Super Bowl report is brought to you by Lynn's Jewelers. The Cowboy running duo of Calvin Hill and Dwayne Thomas have been glorified for their efforts in leading the Cowboys to Super Bowl VI. They have American Football Conference counterparts, great running backs for the Miami Dolphins, Jim Kick and Larry Zonka. And we'll talk with that twosome after this message from Lynn's Jewelers. 